All right, in this lesson, we are gonna look at deferrals. So in the last lesson, we told you that there's really two major types of adjustments, accruals and deferrals. In this lesson, we're only gonna concentrate on the deferrals, and then in subsequent lessons, uh, from here, we're going to kind of break down the deferred expenses and the deferred revenue that we talked about in that last lesson. Once we do that, then we'll talk about accruals and we'll do the same thing as we're doing on the deferrals on the accrual. So let's get started with just kind of an overview and an understanding of deferral adjustments. Now, deferrals from the most basic level is defined as postponed. So if we defer something, we are postponing it. Now, what does that mean for accounting? In accounting, deferral means that we are postponing the recognition of revenue or the um, incurrence of an expense on the income statement until later. Now, this is the adjusting entry. So what's happening is, is that we could be incurring revenues or we could be incurring expenses now, and the key word is could, but we are deferring it for some reason. That reason is usually because we haven't earned the revenues yet or we haven't actually incurred the expenses yet, but we paid for them or we received the cash beforehand, okay? So when we defer revenues or an expense, uh, the cash payment has already been made or received. So thinking about this way, let's kind of break this apart. So deferred revenue would be a situation where we receive the cash from the customers today, but we haven't done anything for that money. And so we have to defer the revenues. We are going to have revenues when we perform the services or deliver a good, but we're going to defer that until we actually perform it or deliver it. So the cash comes first and then we need to do something. We need to perform our performance obligation in order to consider that money or that cash as revenues in our books. Now, from a deferred expense side, the same thing occurs there. We will pay up front an expense that we are going to incur or uh, from either a service that a vendor is going to provide to us or a product that they're supposed to deliver to us. Um, we are going to pay for it up front, which means the cash is going to go first and then the expense or the product delivery is gonna happen later on. Now again, we're not talking about instantaneous situations here. So instantaneous doesn't require an accrual adjustment, sorry, it doesn't require a deferred adjustment at all. We just book the cash and the revenue or the, re the cash and the expense. This is a situation where we have a timing difference. So there must be a timing difference and we sometimes say a, a little bit of significant time, timing difference difference, like more than a couple days, more than a day, that would be significant. But instantaneous, like within hours, probably not something that we would do here. So the cash payment is made before the actual recognition of the income or recognition of the expenses. Now, from a visual standpoint, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at a deferred revenue. This arrow is going to represent time for us. And what happens here is that cash comes first. Notice that the cash comes at the beginning of this timeline, so the cash is received. Now, this wouldn't be an adjusting entry because it has cash involved, but this is the original entry. So no adjustment is being made here. This is just literally what is going on. Someone is giving us cash and we are promising to perform a service or a product to them later on. Then what happens is as time goes on, we either perform the service or we deliver the goods that the customer purchased from us. And once we've done that and completed that, then we are going to book the revenues on our book. So we had a deferred revenue when they gave us the cash. Now we need to switch that deferred revenue into revenues here at the second end here. So revenues is earned here. This is when the adjustment is actually made, okay? So that's what we're looking for for in a deferred revenue. Now let's take a look at the same thing with a deferred expense. With a deferred expense, again, the timeline is gonna represent time here, or the arrow is gonna represent the timeline here. The cash is paid here. So I'm going to pay cash to a vendor, and that vendor is gonna provide me services or goods in exchange for that cash. But they're not gonna do it right away. 
So we're going to have to defer the expenses. So cash is paid here. Again, this is not an adjusting entry because it involves cash. Then that vendor is going to perform the services and or provide the goods that they said that they were going to. And once they've done that, then we are going to book the expense. So the expense occurs after the cash does. This is the adjustment that we're going to make. So cash is not involved here because cash was already paid earlier in this timeline. So that's what we're talking about here. The biggest uh, the biggest mistake a, a student will make is they'll forget that cash was paid here. And so when they book this expense over here, they will debit the expense and credit cash, but they shouldn't be doing that. Jay should be crediting prepaid expense, for instance, because the cash was paid beforehand. So that's the biggest issue I see students um, have when it comes to these adjusting entries. Now let's go through the mechanics, the theoretical part of the deferrals. So a deferral adjustment requires a decrease in a balance sheet account. Um, and what do we mean by that? Well, we are decreasing the liability. So we're decreasing the deferred revenue or the asset deferred expense uh, that we originally entered when we booked the original entry. So what happens when we do a deferral adjusting entry? Well, we're either going to have to decrease the liability if it's a deferred revenue uh, situation, or we're going to decrease an asset if it's a deferred expense situation. So that's what we're going to do here uh, when we make that adjustment. So that's one part of the adjustment. The second part of the adjustment has to do with an increase in the income statement account. So now that we had to defer the revenue and expenses, we now need to book the, def the revenue and expenses. So we're going to increase those accounts. So when we increase the income statement account, we are increasing the revenue if it's a deferred revenue situation, or we're going to increase the expense if it's a deferred expense situation after we've completed the revenue process or incurred the actual expense. So that's the theoretical definition. Let me show you what that looks like from a journal entry standpoint. So on a deferred revenue, the liability is decreased because we no longer owe it to our customers but we've also earned the revenue, so the revenue is increased. What that looks like from a journal entry standpoint is we're gonna debit deferred revenue because that's gonna get rid of the deferred revenue, that's gonna get rid of the liability, and then we're gonna credit the sales or service revenue, okay? So we're gonna debit deferred revenue, credit the sales or service revenue. Now, don't get too locked into these account names. They can change based on uh, how we originally book it. So it's important to understand how did we originally book it? And then we're going to uh, have to release that deferred revenue uh, when we've earned that revenue, okay? So don't be married to these journal entries here, but this is kind of what they're gonna look like. Now, what about deferred expenses? Deferred expenses, well, the asset is going to decrease, that prepaid is gonna decrease and that expense is going to increase. So the journal entry is gonna look something like this. We are going to debit the expense, whatever it is. So I left a blank here. It could be utilities expense, it could be internet service expense, it could be rent expense, whatever that expense that we now incurred, we're gonna book that as a debit and then on the credit, we're going to reduce our asset. That asset was a prepaid. So notice here we have a prepaid blank expense. So it might have been prepaid rent expense, prepaid insurance expense, prepaid internet service expense. Whatever that expense is, we're going to reverse out that prepaid because now we've used it, we've incurred the expense. And remember, cash has nothing to do with this because the cash transaction was done as an original entry beforehand. So those are the adjustments that we would make either on the deferred revenue or the deferred expense side. So that's a look at the deferred adjustments or deferral adjustments. In the next couple of lessons, we're actually going to do some examples so that you get away from the theoretical standpoint, but you kind of need to know what's going on in order to actually do the journal entry. So that's what we're going to be looking forward to here in the next couple of lessons. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video.
Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.